After watching the show, be sure to hop on over to the Spiritual Broadcast Network. It's the go-to place for all things spiritual. You'll discover internet television shows that you won't find anywhere else. You can also choose from hundreds of hours of spiritual documentaries and movies. You'll enjoy on-demand and live internet television programming 24-7. Best of all, we add new dramas, comedies, talk, and reality shows and more on a daily basis. So why spend countless hours searching the web when you can quickly find just what you want on the Spiritual Broadcast Network? Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Shift Happens. If you've been tuning in and waiting for us to come back, as you know, there's been a whole lot of shift going on here today. (laughs) So we are back, and we're here to entertain and enlighten and shift consciousness one show at a time when we can get on the air. But you know, this is what the thing is, is that we're doing something new and you're gonna have shift happening. So, right? So we have a special guest today and we wanna get right into that because I know he's limited on time now. But you have Martin and I, your esteemed hosts, Martin and Connie Jordan, and me uh, being a metaphysical comedian and author, Martin's a psychic medium and past life regressionist, singer songwriter, paranormal overachiever, who's available for sessions privately Mm -hmm. over the phone or in person here in Sarasota. But I want to get right to our show today and, and have Martin introduce our guest and get our conversation rolling. Absolutely. So excited today. We've got Dr. Stephen Farmer with us. And Stephen's a renowned author, teacher, shamanic practitioner, and psychotherapist and soul, soul healer. He also does soul healing. And the reason I sort of written it down so that I remember everything that, that he does. And we also include ourselves in each other's friendship lists because we've been friends now for how long, Tom? Over 10 Over years. Over 10 years. <clears throat> He's published several best-selling books and other products, uh, Earth Magic, Oracle Cards, Animal Spirit Guides, the Children's Spirit Animal Cards, Messages from Your Spirit Guides, a whole bunch of books. I'll let Stephen tell you that's the Sacred Ceremony book. And Stephen will be talking about a lot of those products. He's also available for private consultations. He lives in uh, Laguna Beach, California. Mm-hmm. But does like you, does Skype, does over the phone. And he travels a lot with his workshops and it's great to get to see him. He's going to be in, in southeast September. Florida in September where we'll be seeing him, which we're really excited about. Yeah, and he also does, <laughs> it's a cool word today, he also does some of his readings via Skype. <laughs> and we are, we've got Stephen with us now by a, by a satellite. Skype. Skype. <laughs> From California. Hey, Stephen, are you there? Yes, I am, Martin. I'm Yay. Nice to <laughs> And congratulations you? on your television show, too. Oh, absolutely. A very, a very honored to be uh, actually your first guest. Yes. yes, absolutely. First guest, first Skype, first guest via satellite. First, there's a lot of firsts on this show. So a lot of shift happened on this show, which is really cool. Yes, Great title, too. <laughs> yeah, and, then, and sometimes we don't say shift. We actually say the actual word, but. Well, you I'm know, wondering if we... As a shaman, you, you, you know that's a good word sometimes. <laughs> There's been a lot of shift going on. I'm wondering if we should change the title every time we try to do a show. A uh, shift happening now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I lost my F. <laughs> Keep your paper damp. Get in my shot. It's all, I'm sorry about that. It's all good. It's not radio. No, we're going to start off with that. Just a couple of questions, and then, and then we'll, see. we'll see where that goes. And... We know you were a successful uh, psychotherapist, Stephen, for many years before you retired, and you actually shifted, and you shifted your focus to uh, being a spiritual healer and teacher. How did that come about for you? What was your process? Uh, it's a, you know, it's a good question, and hopefully I, my story won't be too long. But um, I, I really had sampled. I, I wasn't raised in uh, much of a religious atmosphere. I'd uh, been occasionally we my parents would take me to a Methodist church uh, early on a Baptist church etc but uh, you know after teenage years there really wasn't much influence directly in that way and I always felt a little bit weird and different I think many many of us who are drawn to the work in the metaphysical field and and new so-called new age field and uh, we've always felt a little bit different I think more sensitive in certain ways um, not better than you know other people although i go there sometimes but more just sensitive you know and i think we pick up on things a little bit more readily just like yourselves anyway um 
I sample different religious modalities, different spiritual practices, and um, I can't, I, as a psychotherapist, uh, I've always been a healer and a teacher in some form or other over the years. And then um, I took uh, Michael Harner's uh, two-day init initial workshop. I'd been introduced to shamans prior to that. I was curious, but I felt a little bit skeptical. And then I finally was drawn to take a uh, two-day two course that was a, uh, an opening that opened the door to that. And I'll tell you, I just took to it like a duck does to water. I just went, this is it. This is where I need to be at this point in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I pursued various trainings, various shamans that I, I wanted to work with and study with, read like crazy about shamanism, etc. And I was still, now mind you, I was still a therapist at the time, but I, I found that certain elements with certain people or certain groups that I worked with really uh, lended themselves to something quite unique and different in psychotherapy. Uh, as I think most people know, although the face of psychotherapy has changed too, at that time, uh, which was about up to about 10 years ago, it was typically a process where someone would come in once a week or every other week or perhaps even twice a week. And what I found with shamanism, though, is that uh, typically, not always, but typically, not, uh, not necessarily instead of psychotherapy or instead of a medical analysis of what's going on, but I found generally that with the spiritual healing processes that were available through this tradition, shamanism, uh, people would get better quicker. Yeah. Uh, and I thought this is really cool. Then about 10 years ago, uh, I finally uh, just uh, took a six month, gave six months notice to my clients and said, I'm, I'm moving on and went on from there to uh, do more writing along uh, the, the, some of the works that you mentioned. And as a therapist, I'd written a, a few books before, uh, but they were all self-help type books that were in that particular paradigm. But then I found um, one of the, uh, the, there were certain elements of shamanism in my studies that I thought, you know, this could be useful for people that have no interest in shamanism. So thus was born and created Sacred Ceremony, the book that you mentioned. That was the first book in this cycle of my writing and publication. And just went on from there. And I've, I do workshops. I do private sessions, as you mentioned. And have continued to write and produce uh, both books and, uh, and oracle cards as well. And that's, that brings us up to today. And I, I love the work because it's, 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 so, um, it's just so powerful. And it touches into some deep, deep memory that, that I think is in all of us, if we can only tap into it, the memory of what it was like to live in a world where the world was, was naturally viewed as alive. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely agree. And what I find, what I love about your work, and as a, another mutual friend, um, Evie, in California, is you know her being a therapist as yeah. well, and then incorporating mm -hmm the shamanism, I think having both really makes it more uh, well balanced. And I think even like with you, Martin, with a lot of the sessions you've had having the hypnotherapy, you know, it's definitely combining both, I don't know what, what philosophies, but you know, the Western, it, you know, it just doesn't have all the answers. And it, a lot of times we know in Western, whatever philosophies, medicine, however you want to look at that, they only look at the body, they don't look at the spirit and the mind right. and then incorporating all that. And I think by doing that, adding the shamanism and the soul healing, which I can't wait to talk about, um, it really does bring more of a balance because you have that background as well in the psychotherapy. Yes, uh, I think it's well stated, Connie. I, it, it, um, I realized, I guess, or I remembered more accurately just about a couple of years ago, I went, well, I, I know I, I've worked with and I teach and I, I you know, worked with people with these shamanic uh, methodologies uh, and yet I, I don't want to toss, I can't toss the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. In other words, things like you mentioned, Martin, uh, your hypnotherapy. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I've been doing hypnosis. I've had uh, training in certain trauma healing techniques in the psychotherapy model. And some of those blend very, very nicely. Breath work, I've done a lot of stuff as a therapist that I think can be actually integrated nicely in some of the shamanic methodologies. So, just like Evie, our friend Evie and mm -hmm. colleague, um, yeah, it's a it really it really creates um, shall we say I've got a lot to draw from in my medicine bag, <laughs> yeah. and uh, 
yet I still I still tend to uh, emphasize the shamanic processes because again uh, very often they are the most effective for instance you mentioned soul healing um, it's very very effective and it's a lot of fun and I, I just love I, I just love my life I, I'm so appreciative of the opportunity and, and really the privilege of being able to do this work well that's the with the soul healing um, when you were here last year um, well we were at a conference speaking together in Arizona earlier last year yeah. and then um, you had said that you had gotten the hit that a, probably a part of me had left when my son passed and of course I informed you a huge part of me left with my son of course. Of course. And, and you had offered to do the soul retrieval uh, when we got together in September which was really cool and um, September of last year. yeah September of last year and what was really neat about that you and I saw the same thing you yeah. know the same yeah. scene that was going on during that and, and what I wanted to let you know is that you know because that was like on a Thursday and then you had your soul calling workshop on that Monday at Ocean Therapy in Fort Lauderdale and you're gonna be back there and I wasn't expecting anything you know I thought oh I just had this major soul retrieval you know but we wanted to see you and and it was our last chance so I thought well you know we'll go along for the ride I couldn't believe the experience I had because you know yeah we had the one soul retrieval with a part of me leaving when Andrew left but then this went back into my childhood yeah. and I yeah. you know and even Martin had um, a profound experience oh, yeah. with the soul calling mm -hmm. and, and even that night in dream time he had yet another piece come back so I know I want to talk about that but I know is your latest book earth magic yes the the most recent uh, book well I, I won't say the most recent book the most recent is pocket guide to spirit animals but uh, that's a condensation, um, a smaller version, if you will, of the book uh, that is really a very popular book, Animal Spirit Guides. Mm -hmm. Earth Magic, though, is, is one that um, I had done quite a few products. I, I just I almost despise the word products, but works, mm -hmm. let's call it, uh, on spirit animals, etc. And I wanted to do something that would broaden it, and Earth Magic was the one that was created. And it's... Um, it's got it's a compendium of different ways that we can relate to the spirits of the earth and the magic that's in the earth i i know this is uh the, one example of this is i i'm in the growing season now of course the tail end of it is summer wanes but um i planted some cucumbers and it's just amazing to me to watch from the the time they push up through the soil in a little container like this replant them and watch them grow i put some wire uh, structures around the plant and there's these tendrils that reach out and eventually curl around some of those wires and I know that's that's a very small thing but it's also to me it's like I looked at that the other day and I went wow what a miracle that is this is a living being with a spirit mm -hmm. or another way to say it is spirit expressing as this particular being this cucumber plant so I think um, our ancestors thousands of years ago, I mean all of us, all of us, doesn't matter what your ethnicity is, all of us in our ancestry have that um, knowledge somewhere in us of what has been called animism, which means, of course, the world, heaven and earth are, are right here. You know, they're all kind of blended together. The, the spirit is in the material, and the material does, does have that, is the expression of spirit in perhaps a denser form and there's other dimensions of spirit that we can make connection with as you both well know no. so uh, I kind of go on a little bit with that but it's just a, that's what earth magic to me is just appreciating you know that, that I want to encourage people just to appreciate the magic that's available to us and the mystery how this all works you know and we've got our theories but uh, it's more just sitting there and taking a breath standing barefoot in the garden, looking up at that tree, watching the wind blow, and know that that breath of grandfather wind is the same breath that breathed you. Which, I do that a lot. Yes, you do, <laughs> which usually he ends up leaving his body. <laughs> I it's, bet, it's yeah, amazing, that's why I say go barefoot, Martin. <laughs> absolutely, well, it's an amazing practice, and just sitting, just allowing, you know, nature to speak, and allowing, because I'm from Ireland, as you know, oh. and there's some wonderful, wonderful magic in that the amber vial, and you just can't not be in awe of the intuitive nature of 
our spirits, you know, the intuitive nature of plants and animals and the earth itself, very intuitive. Yeah, I suspect that the Irish are, in general, a little bit closer to that, what has been called animism, than, say, we are in the States in general. And that's yeah. a vast organization, but having been to Ireland, not having lived there, but having been there, uh, it's one of my favorite places on the planet because there is such a richness of, of energy. And uh, as I understand, you can tell me if this is not true, but in Western Ireland, it's still quite common for people to go out and leave offerings to the fair, to, oh, to the faith. Yeah, absolutely. Because I'm not sure if your family does that, but we do know that people. <laughs> but here's the interesting thing, though. Whenever we would drive from Belfast to Derry, Mar um, Martin has relatives in Belfast, and your uncle Christy, who's mm -hmm. on the other side now would drive along the coast, um, there's this one bridge that when you go through it, this is what's so funny about people, is that when you drive through this, everybody would be quiet and go, make a wish, because it's the ferry bridge. Mm -hmm. And you have to make a wish as you go under the bridge, or the ferries, I guess, maybe get mad at you, I don't know. But it's, it's <laughs> interesting to, to see that, and yet they'll question other things, but yet they do that. Yes, like they question angels and whether angels exist or not, but don't diss the ferries. Because the fairies exist, and they're afraid. They're afraid to to diss the fairies because they'll do something in the middle of the night that mess up your weekend, you know that kind of thing. And I know a lot of people that actually have that belief system. Um, but that's all. Like when you're dealing with fairy energy and stuff, that's all earth magic. Well, I think. Well, I think your book, Stephen, is very timely now because yeah. Martin and I have gotten. It's we're getting. Weird busy that everybody wants a fairy workshop on how to connect with them and what the signs are and, and how to work with them in the yard. So we'll definitely be pimping your book for that too. Yeah, because I've been called out on a few, a few places, oh, yeah. properties, to actually evoke or evoke the fairy energy. And I always uh -huh. get calls like right afterwards that there's like you see mushrooms are sprouting up. And, and, so, and a ring. Yeah, as soon as I go and talk to the fae. You know, and it's like, it's just weird I go back and go three, two, there's the mushroom. <laughs> you know, it's, That's it's totally great. I, I, I hope, not hope, I really encourage you guys to do the fairy workshop, and perhaps there's even a, a book or a booklet that could uh, be part of that eventually. Yeah. But it's something that, again, it's another expression of spirit. You it know, is. in the not necessarily, um, I, I was going to say the non-visible non form, but they can be visible. There are reports again and again of people actually seeing the fae, seeing the fairies. After a couple of shots of Jameson, they're very easy to see. Yeah, easy to see. <laughs> All sorts of those non invisible, <laughs> supposedly non visible beings. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So it raises the veil. After the third <laughs> shot, the veil just goes away. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that right. works. <laughs> Right. And now the thing, too, now does the book Earth Magic kind of talk about the soul calling work as well? Because it's, that's really interesting because I yeah. love, like, even the, the spirit of the cucumber. I mean. Yeah, but the soul calling work, Stephen, Stephen, you've always amazed us with the work that you do. And then the soul calling just sort of took it to a, another level for us, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, the, uh, the originations of that, and Connie, uh, what your experience was, was. Uh, something that has come up on a couple of occasions, a, a parent that has lost a mother specifically who has lost a child. And I've offered, I offered just like with you, I've offered that uh, what I know happens is that a piece of your soul does go with the child. It's, it's the most natural thing in the world. And for a period of time, uh, it, actually the child's spirit may need that, you know, may still need that attachment as well as the mother may need that attachment. So I think, and I don't want to give specifics unless you're willing to. Oh yourself. no, that's fine. You, absolutely, I'm I'm Our an open book. An open book, believe it or not. You've seen the blog, Stephen. <laughs> I don't yes, hide that, anything. Yes. Uh, well, I, I always want to make sure. I want to clear it with you. But the, the, one of the most amazing pieces was when I went to what's called the upper world. In shamanism, there's three worlds: upper world, middle world, and lower world. Upper world is typically where the human-looking spirits, angels, ancestors, etc., uh, ascended masters, hang out. Uh, the lower world is an area where you see a lot of the spirit animals, whereas the middle world is this world here. Um, and the shaman's uh, practice is really to send his consciousness, or her, his consciousness into this area called non-ordinary reality, and there work with the helping spirits to bring back healing, guidance, etc. And one, uh, one of those aspects is called soul retrieval, or soul recovery 
and that's that I what I do in that instance typically well I won't say typically I say always is I don't decide where to go you know I may have an intention which is different than a decision where to go and the, the intention would be uh, to find that soul piece that most needs to be uh, brought back and then with the help of my guides they take me to whichever soul piece they have determined is the one that needs to be brought back the most. In some instances, like uh, the one with you, there it was more directed. It was more, you know, I'd like to go to Andrew's spirit to see if he's willing to relinquish your soul piece. And uh, one of the interesting parts of that, anyway, then my job is then to ask my guides, which are uh, always the ones that I work with are Raven and Wolf to take me to that soul piece that most needs to be returned. In this case, it was like, let, let's go to find uh, Andrew and see where that soul piece of Connie's is. Because you, you have to be, uh, and you were, you were ready for that. And it took a while to get ready for that. You know, it took a while. But anyway, so uh, where we ended up was the upper world. And guess where we were? With He was uh, apprenticing with Merlin. <laughs> And I visited Merlin on a few occasions in my travels to this non-ordinary reality. And I brought him back, amongst other things. And one of the things you said is that uh, Merlin was one of Andrew's guides. Yeah, he did a lot of work with crystals. And, uh, you know, when he was younger, we were like, how does he know this stuff? And we kind of figured it out. Yeah, uh, maybe it'll be one of those mysteries. Anyway, so then uh, what I, uh, and the other element of shamanism that's important to know is journeying. The shamanic journey is just what I described. It, it may or may not be to do soul retrieval, but it is to go to one's guides to seek help, information, guidance, healing, ceremonies, etc. And um, in one of my journeys, when I went to my, I call them my consultants, um, I was given the task, really, of creating a workshop for soul calling. Basically, what they said to me is, well, soul retrieval is great because it works. You know, it restores a piece of that person, person's soul that was lost along the way for whatever reason or sometimes given away or taken away even in some instances, and often through trauma, through some sort of trauma. And they said, look, you need to, you need to teach this uh, other type of workshop called Soul Calling, which is the one that you two, the, the both of you referenced. And it was, that way it wouldn't just be one-to-one -one where I, as the shamanic healer, would do the soul retrieval, but I could teach people how to do that through a kind of an involved meditation, set up and then a meditation. And obviously from your report, what you said, I keep pointing to the phone over here, mm -hmm. <laughs> from what you just, just described, it works. And so I'm, I'm very happy. I've heard that again and again and again. The soul calling was, uh, for some, a couple of people have written and said it's, it was a lifesaver. So I feel very, like I said, very blessed to be able to do this service to the people that are drawn to me specifically to do the work yeah I was really really blown away because I was just thinking I was went there to relax wasn't expecting anything I love the fact that you um, also you take an animal with you and I was yeah. expecting it to be one particular kind of animal and it ended up being a lion and I thought um, I just was not expecting what I got it was amazing and beautiful and it was very healing um, so and and I'm so happy to hear that, Connie. Really happy to hear that. It is. When you get to be part of um, somebody's healing journey, it is a privilege. You know, because when Martin and I do our events, I'm just blown away mm -hmm. at, at what happens. And I know for you, Martin, it's... That's one of those things you just can't explain. It. It's the results that, that, that count, not the, not the process as far as that goes. It's just we do it differently every time because we're led by spirit. And it's just the results are always amazing. never cease to amaze. That's how I know it's not me. You know, I'm just there. I'm the puppet. Yeah. Well, we know we're Andrew's puppet. I, I know. I understand. Of course, I know that you're a very gifted medium, and you've honed the gifts. And uh, it sounds like you're uh, attracting a lot of clients these days too, which I'm really happy to hear. And yeah, then the two of you do a, 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 pr a presentation together, correct? Yes. Yeah, Martin and I. I I'm kind of like the person that sets it up, the MC, and. Uh, 
kind of introducing who we are. And then also when Martin is doing the readings, I kind of keep an eye on the audience and see where people are at and kind of let Martin know in case he misses somebody that's not in his eye shot. It really works together well, uh, him and I doing, doing it together. I don't know, it's interesting how um, I'm just given a piece of the puzzle for us to work together, even though it's, you know, Martin does the majority of the work. I'm the comic relief most of the time. <laughs> well, it's a nice dance, the yeah, two of you, yeah. the synergy in the way that you work together. I've seen you do it, and there really is a synergy. Yeah. Now, I know that um, we were very honored that you had asked us to write something for your animal spirit cards for the children. Um, I love this deck, and I'm waiting until my daughter does, oh, uh, when my granddaughter isn't going to eat them. Uh -huh. <laughs> to show, you know, to get her introducing, you know, into the oracle cards. Um, and I know you do a lot of work with the animals, and I think what's great that you're introducing, oh, and this is, I know you have this question, Martin, about animals, um, but I love the way that your work introduces animals on a whole higher level, yeah. you know, that they're, that they're guides as well and totems. And I know you wanted to ask Stephen about a certain type of animal. Yes, um, I think I mentioned it to, to you before, Stephen, as we were talking, but I want to bring it up again. One of our friends is an animal communicator uh, down in Miami. His name is Jack Kasowitz. And he's actually teaching the orangutans down at the uh, Jungle Island. Mm -hmm. Used to be the old parrot. Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's teaching them sign language, American sign language. And they're ordering, their, yes. and they're ordering their meals through uh, iPod, iPad, iPads. iPads. <laughs> yeah. And uh, his wife, Donna, runs uh, Dalton Discovery, which is a pretty big swim with the dolphins thing. It's and they also therapy. are using iPads with the dolphins. And they use the iPads with the dolphins and they're using holistic, or not holistic, holographic imaging techniques to actually get pictures of what the dolphins are actually seeing. Cool. It's all brand new, a lot of it's brand new technology. But the dolphin discovery, you pay and you get to swim with the dolphins and they use that money as well for research into dolphin energy and why they're here, what they have to teach us and stuff like that. So it's really, really amazing the work that they're doing. Now, there is an orangutan uh, close to our heart and close to my heart. Got some medicine back here. She's going through, uh, her name is Peanut, and she's an orangutan. And she's going through uh, chemo. She has leukemia. And she's, she's just going through what, Martin? It's, it's a little hard to hear you. I'm she's not going sure through, I hear you. Uh, she's got leukemia. This is a orangutan that's going through leukemia right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah and has a, uh, is going through a chemo protocol. And uh, this is, she just finished her first protocol, and it's the first of seven, I believe. And uh, so I was wondering, orangutan energy uh, as a spirit animal, as an animal guide, and maybe we can use this time to describe the difference. You know, what's the difference between an animal spirit guide, you know, like, and just an animal that you would see? No bringing in a message. Um, I'll start with just a general, uh, yes. general wrap, I guess, about animal spirit guides and spirit animals, which I, I use that term interchangeably. Um, when an animal, and this is the 25 words or less sort of formula uh, to uh -huh. uh, be a template to understand. There, I can hear you better. There's the template to understand uh, what a spirit animal is and how it distinguishes. Any animal that shows up in an unusual way or repeatedly, uh, really there's something pretty big going on. That's an animal spirit guide. doesn't matter what animal it is, insects, flying ones, you know, the, mm -hmm. the close to the ground, etc. And uh, that's whether the animal is uh, in actual physical form or symbolic form, like in a dream. Like I had a weird dream. Well, Dreams are kind of weird anyway when it gets down to I'm it. I'm studying but, dream therapy right now, and I love it. Oh, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah. The symbolism. Oh, the symbolism and all that stuff. It's amazing. Well, Komodo dragon showed up. I, mean, I don't sit around thinking about Komodo dragons. <laughs> what is that? You know, what the dickens is that? And I confess <laughs> that I, un, uh, I cheated a little bit, and that's why I looked Komodo dragon up in uh, Animal Spirit, my book, Animal Spirit Guides, and it was just spot on. It was amazing to me. Ooh. So many experiences like that, you know, where messages come through. So uh, when that animal shows up in some way, it, it, that's your that's a in an unusual way, or repeatedly in a short space of time. Again, whether it's physical animal or 
symbol of the animal. There's something pretty big going on. Right. Like the, uh, I, one of my favorite examples, Martin and Connie, is the, the hummingbird. Um, the hummingbird is um, when, let's say, a hummingbird buzzes you, you know, right in front of your face, you know, a couple feet away. There's the scientific explanation, which, uh, you know, has merit, which is that uh, perhaps her nest is nearby and she's wanting to make sure that, you know, she's going to, they're very protective, so they wants to make sure that you're not a predator, you're not going to eat the eggs, um, like a hawk might or a, a raven or a crow might. Right. Um, on one level, it's, yeah, it's, it's a hummingbird, you know, it's a little bird, it's cute and kind of makes you smile and all that. And then there's another, um, another layer and that is that there's an animating force called spirit that makes this hummingbird alive. Third uh, layer is where the spirit animal comes in. And this is what, what distinguishes, let's say, uh, animal communication, like the hummingbird's trying to say something, you know, or is trying to communicate something, or your dog's trying to say, and spirit animal communication. And that's that um, that hummingbird, when she appears in that way, or repeatedly, or a big dream that you have about hummingbird. It's as if humming ter hummingbird grand central has sent that hum little hummingbird. In other words, it's the oversoul, uh, right. the collective consciousness of that species that has sent that individual representation, either in front of you or in your dream, to pass along a message. Now, that's what's going on. How do how do you uh, interpret that? Well, one thing, that's why I made, you know, these books. I was going to say, we grab your book, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, the book. If it's not in your book, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, but I'll tell you, there's a couple of tricks to, to do to try to discern what that message is. One is, close your eyes, take a deep breath, mm -hmm. and ask in your mind telepathically, hummingbird spirit, or orangutan spirit, or bear spirit, or Komodo dragon spirit, What's the message? And then that's when you pay attention to everything that happens. As soon as you ask that question, what you see, what you hear, what you feel. And um, it takes a little practice, but you can get pretty good at that, discerning what the message is. The second trick is consider the animal, the characteristics of the animal. And mm -hmm. an example would be, again, hummingbird. It's my favorite example, really. Hummingbirds are light. You know, so maybe the message is, lighten up. Right, yeah. <laughs> if you just think of a hummingbird, it's hard not to smile. So yeah. cheer up, be a related message. The hummingbird's flexibility, the only bird to fly backwards, forwards, upside down, you know, etc. Flexibility, being able to move quickly in any direction. Uh, the, uh, the nectar, you know, taking the nectar from the flowers, that's their food. So... It's important, let's say, when that hummingbird shows up in that way, that you, you sweeten up your life, you know, in some way. Do things that help you feel good. You know, not necessarily go out and have a, you know, giant-sized yogurt or something. You know? mm. <laughs> Maybe, but sweeten up your life. You know, do things that, that, that have a sweetness to them. So the metaphor, the, the characteristics of the animal become a metaphor for the message. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. So let's look at orangutan, and particularly one that's ailing. Now, as a spirit guide, you know, again, may or may not be a spirit guide. Oh, I should say a couple more things real quick. Uh, power animal, totem animal, animal spirit guide. Animal spirit guide is any animal. Power animal comes from shamanism, but I'll tell you what, everybody's born with one. And sometimes these power animals are called totem animals. For our purpose, it's pretty much the same. Um, and that's that uh, it's really interesting to me that we're born with a particular spirit animal. And often later in life, we kind of know that. But about seven, eight years old, sometimes we lose that um, awareness of that spirit animal. And nobody's there to support it. So they get bored and they move on, you know, as, as our particular special animal spirit guide. Totem mm -hmm. also is a, let's say this, uh, pic here, I'll show you a totem. A totem is also a representation of a particular favored spirit animal. This is a totem made out of dolomite uh, of raven, who happens to be one of my power animals. Now, I call them power animals because that's the tradition of shamanism. And those power animals, there's four that I work with right now, uh, typically stay with you for years. And sometimes they shift and change. Owl was a very prominent power animal for about 15 years. 
And then Raven came along and sort of pushed pushed Owl in the back seat of the car. <laughs> Owl still a, but isn't as strong. Raven is is very primary right now. So anyway, that's uh, that's kind of the the short, you know, hopefully short wrap on uh, spirit animals, power animals, totem animals. Yeah, I think it's it's the same thing with spirit guides too. Uh, we have found because originally, you know, uh, with Martin, he had St. Patrick that was coming through for a while, and then Merlin took over. And so we find that a lot of times that they'll shift according to where you are in your life. Yeah. I um, mean, yeah. I like we know like even with angels, uh, you know, we have found that people, you know, people will ask, "Do I have a guardian angel?" And we said, "Absolutely, you have at least one. We have yet to see anybody with only one." And then we have seen how angels will just kind of ebb and flow with whatever is going on with your life, move on, someone else comes in. So it's interesting Great. too that it happens in the animal yeah. power yeah. kingdom. Yeah. No, and I the, other, the other nice thing is you can call on a spirit animal of any sort. It doesn't have to be your power animal or a totem animal for a particular um, uh, medicine. Right. You know, it, of that term, you know, the spirit animal medicine. Like yeah. if you are feeling a little depressed or kind of bleh, uh, call on hummingbird. Just close your eyes and say, hummingbird spirit, come to me and help me cheer up. Right, <laughs> you know, yeah. There, come to me and help me with, you know, really standing my ground. You know, people are putting pressure on me to change my mind. I really need to stand my ground. Cougar. Cougar spirit, help me with confidence. You know, I've got this big talk or this class I'm teaching, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that's a pretty cool thing, too. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like uh, when you talk about the angels or even like with Merlin or any of the yeah. ascended masters that we have that you can call on. Now, this is how I explained it to Andrew is that, you know, like with Jesus, I said religion claims him. He doesn't claim religion. Just same thing with Ganesh or any of the other ascended masters. You know, we and it, you can call on them for anything. You know, they're always there ready to help and that's really yeah. cool that it's in the animal kingdom as well now i, I see here I, go ahead what were you going to say Stephen? well i was gonna i, I was gonna uh in uh, the new book pocket pocket guide to spirit animals which i'll show on the screen here um that's the front cover again it's a condensation i had to do a little trimming with animal spirit guides to make it fit this size <clears throat> but uh, there was uh, quite a bit of interest in this. A lot of people asked me for this. Um, I This is one way you can use this book or Animal Sphere Guides is, okay, like you mentioned, Martin, well, we go to the book. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do that. So I, I thought, well, let's see what orangutan, you know, what the book says about orangutan. And typically um, what I've done here is just these are the possible messages from orangutan, and there's about five of them here. If I could go ahead and read yeah. them, actually. Yeah. Orangutan. To accomplish what you have set out to do, put on your best face to get the job done. <laughs> no, I understand that. With orangutans and their faces, they're very distinct and they're very. Oh, yeah. There you yeah. go. And that's a good, uh, Martin. Good catch. That's a, that's the metaphor. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, Absolutely. their faces. Yes, so their cute. faces, because there's there's no two faces exactly the same. And very expressive. Yeah. And mm -hmm. related. Pay closer attention to the expressions on the faces of those you deal with, mm. and trust what you see more than what you hear. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I've yeah, been doing a lot of that lately. I've been, a lot of my clients, I've been trying yeah. to train them to go with what they're getting, not what they think is there, or not what they hope is there, but go with what you're seeing. Go with what's right there in front of you. Very congruent, then, with what, what yeah. is occurring. Yeah. Clients. Awesome. Uh, for, go ahead. What was the other ones? Well, there's a couple more. I'll just read them real quick. Sure. Whatever your needs are, do your best to be creative and use the available resources you find in your immediate surroundings. Again, a metaphor of the orangutans. They're very resourceful. Yes, they are. <laughs> and last but not least, it's best, it's best to have more fruit in your diet <laughs> on a regular basis in order to create a healthier physical balance. So that's from, there's, there's perhaps other messages from the cool. spirit of orangutan, but that's some of the... Uh, possible messages and again what I tell people when you read these is there might be anywhere from four to six see if one or two jumps out at you yeah and click. yeah it's like any mess like when you know when people go to a psychic it's like if a psychic to me if a psychic's 80 percent on the mark man I'm there yeah oh absolutely I my yeah. own response to what the psychic is saying or yeah. the medium it may be now I have an interesting story about the orangutans we learned so much at the zoo um, a, a lot of the orangutans, um, they're losing their home 
in Borneo because of the rainforest are just tearing it down. So there's a guy out there and he's trying to collect these orangutans, trying to disperse them around the world in different zoos. And uh, he noticed that one of the older orangutans had lost his territory to a younger one. And this is, you talk about resourcefulness, Stephen, you're gonna love this. So this orangutan trained the wild pigs in his area by giving them food to let him know when the younger orangutan was around so he could bolt. So he like, he got his own little Guido um, security system. Yeah. And he, he saw that and they don't get along normally in the wild, but yet this orangutan saw that he could train these pigs to be his bodyguards. That's, that's perfect. And again, example of resourcefulness. Well, complete resourcefulness, you know, it's, it's just sort of watching something like that it's just like sort of bringing it into your life and just saying, okay, I've got to use what I've got. Instead of hoping and wishing for things to come in, look around, see what you've got, and see if that can help you further along. And again, I, I stress that it isn't just, um, at first it might seem like a kind of a game, you know, but that's, that's a great way to start. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. It's much more than that is guidance is available to it. And again, I'm preaching to the choir here, but mm -hmm. it's available to us. Yeah. Don't look for the signs. Look for the omens. Learn to discern the signs, and your intuition will tell you. You can you can uh, you know uh, go to the book to look for sure. You know that's what they're there for. To but I see those things as bridges, like the oracle cards and the books as right. bridges. It's magic. The book is bridges. Is to to just not just appreciating the wonder of the world, but the fact that uh, God or spirit or creator, however you want to say that really gives us uh, uh, incredible guidance when we're open to it. Well, you know, when you do like what you said, Stephen, you know, like what Martin has always done too, watching a wasp or an ant or like even with the cucumber. I love me my wasps, I do. But, you know, you, you can feel the oneness when you really tap into that energy and realizing that we're really not separate. No. That we are all connected, that we all have this energy, this thing that flows within us and through us that we're a part of. And, you know, one is not better than the other. No, and your, your own personal and cultural um, teaching and how you were brought up and where you're led to, et cetera, will de determine um, the, shall we say, the nature or the specifics of what spirit guides you will work with. Uh, if you're Christian and you get above, let's say, the dogmatism of it, and really relate to Jesus as an ascended master and a guide, it can work. Yes. And if it's Buddha, you know, it can work. Or the angels or ascended masters or animal spirit guides or plant spirit guides. I know some a guy that works with plant spirit guides. Um, wow. I, I know him, but I know of him. <laughs> um, I, I got to tell you one story, if I may, about uh, a visit from Hawk that was very, very recent as an example. Um, I don't see a lot of hawks around here, you know, where we live, and yet there's been maybe two occasions when one visited, one visited about four or five days ago. I have walked out the back, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the door of my office, uh, the house is set up, there's the house where uh, we live, our family, and then uh, there's a separate quarters, of, they call it, uh, it's a guest house or mother-in-law quarters, and that's turned into my office. So I walked out of my office in the backyard, and out of the corner of my eye, there's a hawk, and he lands on the fence. Wow. wow. Yeah, as I'm telling you the story now, I even get chills, you know, a little. Yeah, oh, wow. And I went, oh, okay, obviously, this fits uh, uh, Dr. Farmer's definition. <laughs> 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 no, unusual. Yes, I would say unusual. So I did what I suggest to people to do, and I mentioned earlier. I took a deep breath, closed my eyes, opened my hands in the direction of where he was sitting on the fence, and I said, Hawk Brother. Uh, what's your message? And I got four very distinct messages, very short too. Spirit tends to walk, you know, talk like that. Mm -hmm. to, to, um, and they were, um, pay, uh, they were let go, mm -hmm. <laughs> forgiveness, uh, particularly let go of judgments and expectations. And then fourth, we were on our way to to lunch with a friend, Eva Blacktail Swan, and. Uh, the fourth message was pay attention to what is going to go on there because it's something very special. And I went, okay. Uh, so, um, you know, this has been still working me. This is a week ago. It was a wow. reminder, really, the new information. Of course, let go uh, quickly. Let go of expectations and judgments. 
And of course, as soon as uh, Spirit says, let go of expectations and judgments, guess what happens? <laughs> you know, they throw us a, a kink, you know, oh, this is the plan. Yeah, but this was the plan. Oh, let it go. <laughs> and judge Not to not have them, you know, have expectations. They're going to happen. Not to have judgments. Don't, don't judge. That's baloney. We judge. Absolutely. We do. We're human. Let, let them go. You know, let them go as soon as you can. The, the, one of the most interesting things, though, of that message was going to have lunch with Eva uh, Blacktail Swan, uh, who, by the way, has a new book called Creator Song that's really, really cool. She goes out every morning at 4 o'clock in the morning and receives messages and then passes them on to all people, Cherokee medicine elder. Oh, nice. Well, Stephen, um... Well, there, we sit down, you know, have the, hi, how you doing? We're a little bit late getting there because we've got directions got screwed up. But anyway, we got sat down. And I see this canvas bag sitting next to her, and I go, huh, interesting, and what that is. And about 15 minutes into our conversation, she says, I have a gift for you. And she brings out this drum that she made, <laughs> this beautiful drum, uh, a number 951. She makes drums quite a bit. But then she tells the story of the drum, how it's a particular part of the moose, how she did it in uh, sacred ceremony, etc. It was just... So Hawk was telling me ahead of time, you know, was giving me a little bit of a forecast, saying, hey, pay attention. And it was a, a wonderful gift. I've played it a couple times, and it's a little flat just because she makes them in Colorado, and here I live near the ocean, and it's been very humid. Oh, yeah. Anyway, irrelevant. But anyway, it was a, it just, again, another example after probably hundreds of examples. I've either heard from other people, or I've had myself of a spirit animal, uh, relaying an important message that's incredible i love this you know when you can connect to animals that way and spirit that way we only have a few minutes left Stephen, so i want to make sure that we get your website and what's going on your you upcoming know. events yeah. what you have coming up well not all of them we don't have that much time but <laughs> <laughs> a few yeah i uh, thank you connie uh, earthmagic.net uh, best place to go to get the details on this and uh, I, I'm looking now at the schedule. I'll be going to Colorado very shortly uh, to, now I'll, I, I also have a CD of children's spirit animal stories, volume one, and I've been writing uh, volume two, two, and I'm gonna be up there recording for a couple of days. And then I'll be at Celebrations Bookstore on the 7th and the 8th. I'm gonna do uh, an introduction uh, to the uh, children's uh, cards as well as the stories and also the pocket guide that I mentioned and showed you. Uh, I'll be doing introduction to the shamanic journey there on the uh, Saturday the, the 8th, and then I'll be going up to um, Full Moon Books in Denver and doing a couple things there. I'll be doing private sessions there and also a workshop called Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides. Then I'll be in Florida. Yay. More humidity. Of course, we already had dinner planned, which I'm excited about. Oh, My excellent. Must the court's probably going to show up and join us. Even so. better. She's going to be better. on our show, too. Yes. Yeah, no, she's delightful. We had a good time, the four of us together. Yeah. Uh, last time I was there, I always enjoyed uh, yeah. every company. It's nice to have friends, too, quite frankly. Traveling can be a lonely thing, so it's just so great to go, oh, I've got friends. Yay, <laughs> right? Motivated yeah, friends. My only uh, three, but that's okay. Oh. No, just kidding. That's right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, anyway, I'll be doing Introduction to the Shamanic Journey, Children, Animal, and Spirit Guides, Earth Magic Healing Sessions, Getting to Know Your Spirit Animals, and more Earth Magic Healing Sessions. I'll be at the Ocean Therapy Institute. Anyway, details. Earthmagic.net. Earthmagic.net. Now, I know we're going to have to go, but um, I, you know, what we like to end our show with, well, we'll give our website real quick, is pureheartspace.com, and that's P-U-R-E-H-E-A-R-T-S-P-A-C-E.com. Yes. That's where you can contact Martin for readings, mediumship, hypnotherapy, whatever. But what, how we like to end the show, Stephen, is that last week we did it with a breathing exercise, and we just thought maybe just take even 30 seconds to kind of, because I asked Martin, I said, what are we going to do at the end of this one? And he didn't have any idea. So um, I thought maybe we would do some kind of just a deep breath and what animal or how mm -hmm. would you normally do that from a shamanic point of view? Well, we can just do a short meditation. I'm happy to do that. Um, and I don't mind being uh, asked, you know, on the spot at all. I, I love <laughs> doing that sort of thing. So uh, if uh, I have your agreement, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, first thing I would ask all who are watching and listening just to put your feet on the ground. Uh, not necessary, but ideally your, your bare feet. Uh, I, s I certainly don't wear shoes anymore, and I have to. I like that connection to the earth. And uh, what I'd like...
like to do, of course, is start with your breathing. Also, lifting yourself up, whether you're sitting or standing. And I say lifting yourself, not sit up straight. There's a difference. Uh, you can imagine an angel lifting uh, your head up just from a, right from the crown chakra so that your spine is nice and comfortable, but um, you're more positioned in a, a, a place of stature. Uh, you can do what you want with your hands, sitting on your lap, uh, putting the palms up if you prefer. You could even do a mudra if you want to hold your hands in prayer position in some way, in some fashion, whatever you'd like to do. And then as you inhale, hold it for about three seconds, and then exhale. Let your body determine your next breath and inhale. And again, hold it for three seconds. You allow your shoulders to relax, legs, your hips, your torso, and one more time, inhale, hold it for three, and now allow your breathing to return to a nice, easy rhythm, nice, natural rhythm. your uh, breathing remain in a nice comfortable rhythm and notice perhaps as you do that with each breath you exhale you find yourself relaxing a little bit more each time and whether you have your eyes open or closed it doesn't matter you remain more any distracting thoughts. And as you notice any of these thoughts, much like birds passing by in the sky, just noticing that and then returning your awareness and attention to your breath. Now, as if you were sitting comfortably in a natural place, a place in the natural world. It does not matter where in your mind's eye. Picture yourself there. Feel yourself there. you do, simply ask, tell me. asking such as, I would like a message from you, and once you stated or asked that question, as soon as you finish the thought, notice whatever 
to the area, wherever you happen to be, listening, watching this show. Thank you, Stephen. Well, God bless you both. Please. And God bless you, too. And we'll see you next month. And I know you have an appointment that you have to leave for right now. So, again, thank you for being our first guest. We love you so much. We do. Right. Hugs love and kisses to the family. And we'll see you soon. Hey, God bless you all that are listening and paying attention and watching. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. We want to thank everybody who's tuned in. <clears throat> and I know we were delayed and shift was happening. But um, again, tune in next week. Karen Anderson will be our guest. And Angel Intuitive. Our Angel Intuitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, shift, uh, tune in again for Shift Happens. After watching the show, be sure to hop on over to the Spiritual Broadcast Network. It's the go-to place for all things spiritual. You'll discover internet television shows that you won't find anywhere else. You can also choose from hundreds of hours of spiritual documentaries and movies. You'll enjoy on-demand and live internet television programming 24-7. Best of all, we add new dramas, comedies, talk, and reality shows, and more on a daily basis. So why spend countless hours searching the web when you can quickly find just what you want on the Spiritual Broadcast Network?